First story. OP is going to a funeral. Her abusive mother, whom she hasn't seen or spoken to in six years, will be there. OP is also pregnant with mom's first grandchild. I'm just kind of freaking out and need some support. I won't skip my grandfather's funeral. He was a one-of-a-kind man, and the world is darker without him in it. At the same time, I'm so worried that mom will try to use this event to talk to me or reconnect or something, and my pregnancy will be her perfect excuse. She was extremely neglectful and psychologically abusive in my childhood, so there's no way I'm letting her back into my life. Her strategy was always woe is me. Single motherhood is so hard attention seeking think mother Gothel. So a public confrontation about how I'm keeping her only grandchild from her is right up her alley. And it's a no-win for me. If I don't engage, she can ruin the funeral for me and my saying goodbye to my grandfather. And if I do engage, then she can make the funeral about her. Oh, and she may have some heirloom hand nets to pass down, which I may have to leave on the table, even though I do want them. And that's upsetting as well. I'm just so scared that going is a bad idea. But I live so far away, and I couldn't get time off to say goodbye while he was in hospice. And I know I would regret not going. I'm just kind of a wreck. And I will take any advice or support you can spare. Thank you in advance. Update. Per many folks here, I have recruited a friend who is aware of the history and willing to run interference to attend with me. Update posted in Armum for a minute. Update. I went to a funeral today. My abusive mother, who I hadn't seen or spoken to in six years, was there. First of all, thank you to everyone who commented especially those who suggested I go in disguise with a wig and big sunglasses. Unlikely to have been effective, but very fun to think about nonetheless. So, I recruited my best friend from high school, who is much beloved by myself and my husband, to accompany me to the funeral. He was present for a lot of my mother's behaviors back in the day and knew what to expect should she decide to engage. He was also enthusiastic about the idea of playing forceful bodyguard if necessary. I'm sorry. But MS Rainbow Star is not taking questions at this time. Move along. It was a fun car ride. We did discuss how to handle various family members and situations, including my worst case scenario, which he agreed was unlikely, but did sound like something she would do. Since the goal was not to provide any openings, we had a lot of hypotheticals to work through, but in brief, we settled on. One, I will not engage her or anyone known to be a sympathizer. Two, I will allow myself to be approached by her or a sympathizer be polite but distant, and provide no specifics or any real conversation starters. 3A If approached before the service, I will take the advice from redacted and answer any intrusive or inappropriate topics with boundaries like, Papa's funeral is not the place to discuss these things. If pushed, I would disengage, and my friend would engage her so I could re-enter for the service. 3B If approached after the service I would say, I'm so sorry to hear about your father, he was a great man, and we would both disengage immediately until she stopped following up to and including driving away. 4. If she made any assumptions about her place in the baby's life, I would be abrupt and firm, allow her to make as much of a scene as she wanted to, and try to pick the most scathing time to pull a Maggie Smith and say, get a hold of yourself, and then disengage. 5. All the above goes out the window, if she makes a full apology for any part of her role in our estrangement. So armed, we went in. We were among the few wearing masks. We had a few minutes before the service started and there was no receiving line or socializing in the lobby, so we went to the bathroom, and then took our seats in the back, not in the family area with one minute to go. My brother did notice me and came back to offer to trade seats with me, so I could sit with the family. He was sitting right next to my mother. I just said, no thank you, and gave him a hug. He did not argue. At one point during the service, mom did turn around and look at me. I had to look past her to see the lectern, so I had a very clear view of her angry face, before she turned back around. After the service, I wanted to see which of Papa's works of art they had picked for the memorial display, so I waited until Mom was in conversation with someone because I had to walk past her to get to it. After we looked at the display, Mom's best friend approached me. Her. Hey. Me. Hi, nice to see you again. She looked pointedly at my belly a few times. I smiled vapidly. So. I waited, hoping I could make eye contact with someone else and move on. Because, while this conversation was not bad, it was awkward as f. But we were in scenario two, so my friend let me lead. So, what are you expecting? I asked her to repeat herself, while I debated saying no. I'm five months pregnant. It would be very funny to say no. But I thought it might have some unpleasant downstream effects, so I said, yes. When are you due? May. Oh nice. Thank you. And then I gave her a sympathetic shoulder squeeze and walked away, saying, 
take care. I talked to my cousins for a while, as well as one of my brothers and my sister. My cousins are neutral, as far as I know, and they are delightful people. My siblings are not neutral, but they know better than to test me. I was never worried about them. My aunt stopped by to say hello and hug, and then moved on without any prompting or awkwardness, and then we cousins had a delightful and rambling conversation that was everything I needed in that moment. After a bit, I referenced our long return drive, but did not say how long so as not to indicate where I was staying, and we gave hugs and left. My mother was talking to Papa's wife. She looked in our direction presumably at us, but I was watching her out of my peripheral vision, so I can't be sure, but did not follow. We went straight to the car and drove away. So, all in all, everything went about as well as it could possibly have gone. I do not feel that the time and energy spent preparing was wasted at all, and I deeply appreciate the advice and support that I got from all of the wonderful moms and siblings here. I will be sure to lurk for a while and attempt to repay the favor, since I cannot possibly thank you all enough. Much love from this duckling. You are all excellent. Second story. OP's boyfriend and his family accusing OP of being a baby killer after she lost her baby. I 19F found out I was pregnant a month ago. I've been on birth control since I was 15. Same pill. I'm enrolled in school, have a job, and live in an apartment in a city close to home. I have a cat too. Everything was perfect. Six weeks ago, I missed my period. I waited 10 days and missed my period. This wasn't normal. I originally started the pill because of my irregular period. Did I miss a pill? I counted twice, three times and four. No extras. I looked at the open pack I had for this month and the unopened one for next month. They weren't expired. They were exactly the same, down to the print of the expiration date. I fished the trash can for last month's empty package. Same thing. I couldn't stop thinking about it. On the way to class that morning, I grabbed three pregnancy tests from the campus bookstore. I sat my coffee and breakfast sandwich outside the bathroom door and went in. I've never taken a pregnancy test, but I've always heard the phrase pee on a stick, so I opened all three and used them at the same time. I waited three minutes and washed my hands, grabbing each of the tests with a paper towel. All three of them were positive. I cried. I dry heaved. I wanted to pass out on the bathroom floor. I called my boyfriend, and he was as excited as ever. I was panicking, saying we weren't ready for a baby how I couldn't stay in school and work with a newborn, and how I would lose everything. I'm not ready. I don't want children right now. He started to say how I was selfish, and would just have to put my classes and whatnot on hold until the baby was old enough to go to daycare. That made me nauseous. I told him I was coming home, and he met me there. He held me and cried, saying how happy he was. I felt so disgusted with myself for knowing I didn't want this baby after seeing him cry like that. I wanted to try and keep the baby for him. I thought about having the baby and just leaving him with it. I thought about disappearing and never having the baby. After a few days, I had to ask what he thought of me getting rid of the baby. He told me he would hate me and would never speak to me again. He laid into me, going on and on about me being a baby killer and how I was selfish, evil and immature for even thinking something like that. We got into a huge argument from there and I made him leave. He broke my TV and my favorite vase. I cried for days, begging him to take me back. He said I would if I kept the baby. Needless to say, he didn't take me back. I spent every night after that drinking bottle after bottle of Jim Beam whiskey. Apple flavored. My dad's favorite. I miscarried in the dead of the night on a Thursday. I thought I had a real bad stomach bug until I saw the blood in my toilet. My neighbor took me to the hospital, where my now ex's sister works. He showed up with my mom, his mom, and his dad. While she half hugged me, his mom and dad made comments about how I probably did this on purpose considering I didn't want the baby anyway. I just kept my mouth shut. My mom asked if they were here to support me or their son, and if they weren't here for me, they should just leave. They started arguing, and eventually it got loud, and security escorted everyone out. But not before my ex and his family could start shouting at the top of their lungs, I'm a baby killer, and I'm going to hell, and yada yada yada. I'm in so much pain, I'm so tired, and I'm so angry. Everything had to come to this. I really loved him, and now I feel like I'm losing everybody because of this. TLDR. I got pregnant, even though I've been on birth control. My ex wanted to keep it, but I didn't. I drank until the baby died, and now I'm in the hospital being labeled as a baby killer. Edit. This post got a lot more attention than I thought it would. I'm a little overwhelmed with lots of messages and comments. I really appreciate all the genuine support from people. I'm going to try to take the good advice here and ignore the mean people. Thank you all so much again. All updates were added to the original post. Update. Hello again.
For those of you wondering, I'm 19, my ex is 23, and I'm still in the hospital. My ex's family is gone, and my mom went home a bit ago. If my vitals stay where they need to be, I can leave tomorrow. I'm trying to convince myself that the miscarriage isn't my fault, but I still feel like SHT. But I really do appreciate everyone trying. I did see a lot of comments about the potential HIPAA violation. I'm going to report it once I'm closer to leaving. I feel very anxious about reporting it while I'm still here. Also, I really don't think my ex would tamper with my birth control. But I also didn't think he was abusive until you guys pointed it out. I honestly just feel so confused and hurt, and I'm ready to get out of this dumb hospital. I understand this is my fault, I'm in here though. What I did was pretty dumb. Sorry for the boring update, but I'm really tired. Thank you all so much for the kind words. Update 2. I woke up to twice as many comments and messages as yesterday. You guys have absolutely shredded my inbox. I never knew so much kindness could exist in one place. And I've actually cried at a lot of these. You all are so amazing. I will be going home soon. The hospital staff compiled a list of resources for me therapy, support groups, substance abuse treatment etc. My ex went back to my apartment and disabled the Wi-Fi cameras I had set up. I had to block him and his family members after I got almost 100 messages, so I'll be returning with my dad. I asked the night nurse to make sure my ex's sister was not my nurse for today, as she made me feel really uncomfortable, so I shouldn't see her anymore. I'm really going to try and take all the advice you guys give me. I'm probably not going to update this post again. Last, thank you, and I truly mean thank you all. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.